live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering RSA Conference 2019. Brought to you by Forescout. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the RSA Conference in Moscone in San Francisco. They finally got the conversion done. It looks beautiful. It's keeping the atmospheric river out. <laughs> Didn't do that last week, but that's a different story for another day. We're excited to have our very next guest. He's Joe Cardamone. He's a senior information and security analyst for, and North America privacy officer for Hayworth. Joe, great to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So for the people that don't know Hayworth, give us kind of the, uh, the quick overview on Hayworth. Well, Hayworth is a global leader in uh, commercial office interiors. Uh, they create seating, desks, dynamic workspaces, uh, raised floors and movable walls. Okay, so really outfitting beyond the shell when people move into a space. That's correct. So what are your, some of your security, uh, that sounds that's like mobile walls and desks and, and the like, well, what are some of the concerning issues that you have to deal with? Well obviously intellectual property is a, is a big concern. Uh, protection of my, of our, we call our employees members. Okay. So the protection of our employee member data is important to us, customer data, supplier data. Uh, so protection of those key, those key data elements and our assets is a priority in my, my role. Okay, so we're in the Forescout booth, uh, you, you're using their solution. Um, you come in, Mike tells us, you, you connect it to the network, it crawls out and tells us all the devices. How did that go? How well did it work for you guys? It was a fantastic experience for us, to be honest with you. Uh, from the point that we deployed the ISO onto a virtual instance, uh, about seven hours later, we had about 97% visibility to our network. And not just data, actionable data, which was really important to our use case. Um, so yeah, keep going. So, as, well, I was just going to say, how, but how many surprises did you get after those hours when you got the report back? Oh, uh, we had quite a, quite a number. Um, we were anticipating about 8,000 IPs. We landed at about 13,000. Uh, so there was quite a bit more endpoints that we discovered um, after implementing the product. Uh, one of the bigger pieces that we found was that our showrooms out in uh, global sectors like Asia and Europe had a bunch of APs that were stood up. You know, some salespeople thought that they wanted to plug them into a network jack and stand up their own wireless networks. We had found them, we were able to squash them pretty quickly. Uh, and that was within 24 hours of implementing the product. So you were expecting 8,000, you got 13,000, so more than a 50% increase over what you thought. Quick math, correct, yes. Yeah, yeah, quick, I'm not a quick and dirty math guy. I'm not, I'm a, not, I'm not a data scientist. Okay, so, so and then how many, how many things did you have that were custom that needed to be added to the library? I'm going to say about 10 or 15 units. We have some that we produce. Hayworth creates a unit called the Workwear Unit, which is a, uh, a screen presentation casting device. And what that device does, it sits on our production network, and in order for us to be able to demo that device, we had to punch holes in our firewall. A very manual process. Um, those devices move around very often, and it was really hard for our IT teams to keep up with how those devices move, how dynamic they are, and you know, code revisions. We're a living showroom, so nothing stays in one spot at one time. The Force Scout was able to very easily identify them using a couple of pieces of information that it gathered, and by using the Palo Alto Networks plugin, we were able to then dynamically punch holes through our firewall to our guest network for just those IPs and just those services and just those ports to enable our guests coming in who are looking to purchase the product to actually test drive it and really have a good use with the product before purchasing it. So the guests that you're talking about are your customers, your Our customers, customers, customers correct, right? Yes. And, and when you say they wanted to test drive it, were they? Do you let them to go test drive it at their at their local office, or you let them drive their own content on it back at your like executive briefing center? How does that mean? Because you're talking about punching punching holes. Yes. Right? So yes. that doesn't just happen uh, no, without some thought. Exactly. And the thought was is we can't sell a product if we can't demo it. And you come into Hayworth, you're my guest. You, I want you to see the power of my product. I want you to use your laptop, your content on my screens in my space. How can we do that while protecting my digital network? And that's what the Forescout enables us to be able to do as part of our micro, micro segmentation strategy with the Forescout. And then you said that that was tied to some functionality in a, in a Palo Alto Networks device. That's correct. Like I mentioned earlier, the ability to have actionable data was one of our key points in purchasing and deploying the Forescout unit. Um, we are we're experiencing a lot of growth, and the way we're treating our growth is we're treating these companies like they are BYOD. 
We want, we're buying their brand, we're buying their ability to sell their product, they know their product, they have passion about their product. So these are new product lines within, the, within your guys' total offering? Correct, okay. yes. Um, and what we wanted to do when we started to integrate the IT side of the world, we wanted to be able to keep them operating on their own. So we're using the Force Scout to be able to look into their network and looking at a couple of key variables on their machines say, do you meet this criteria? If you do, then we're going to allow you to egress through our Palo Alto firewall using the Palo Alto Networks module on the Force Scout to be able to egress into our environment. If you don't meet that criteria, then you're just not getting in, period. Right. So we're able to provide a measure of control, trust but verify, to the other networks that we have before their devices come into ours. So, so you're doing that, you're adding all these, all these devices, you talk a lot about stuff that's actionable. Mm -hmm. What did you have before, or did you have anything before? What, what, what types of stuff that is actionable? How do you define actionable? And I wonder if you'd give a couple of examples. Sure, that's actually really easy. Um, when I say actionable data, I'm able to look at, let's just say, your laptop sitting here. With the Force Scout, I can gather any multitude of data off of it, uh, patch levels, OS levels, software installed, processes running, what switch port you're on, what wireless AP you're on. And off of all that information, I can make any number of decisions. I could move you to another VLAN, I can move you to uh, another security group, I can tag your machine, I can send a trap to my SIM, to my SIM and be able to uh, uh, record whatever data I need to record. In our use case, um, using the data that we're gathering from the affiliate networks and from the, for, uh, the workwares, we're able to then take action to say, yes, this device meets our criteria. We can now send that data up into the Palo Alto and tie it to a rule that exists to allow or disallow traffic. You know, with the fact that it's a single pane of glass, the fact that I can have my help desk go in and make decisions based on data that they're getting, based on actionable data, based on other pieces of data that are getting fed in through my environment like indicators of compromise, I can enable my level one staff to be able to make level three decisions without giving them keys to the kingdom, which I think is a big value with the Force Scout. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive, because that really helps you leverage your resources in a major, major way. Correct, I'm a team of three. Your team of three. Yes. <laughs> so, so more specifically, I guess generally, you know, talk about the role of automation um, because I don't know how many transactions are going through your system and how many pings are coming in, but you said 13,000 devices just on the, initial, on the initial ping. Um, so how are you leveraging automation and what, what's kind of the future do you see in terms of AI and machine learning and all these things we hear about because you can't hire your way out of the problem. You only got three people. Correct, correct. Right now we have limited staff, but our skill set's fantastic. We, we, I'm blessed to have a team of really fantastic engineers that I work with. That being said, how the Force Scouts helped us is being able to take some of the load off of them by automating tasks. And some of that might be, we have a machine that is not patched. We can identify that machine, put into a group. Um, our servers are actually being patched by the Force Scout right now. We're, we're using that as a way to identify vulnerabilities, uh, missing patches, and then stage them into groups using the policies within the Force Scout to be able to push down patches. And you mentioned earlier what other products that we had that gave us this visibility. We really didn't have anything. We had Force Scout a number of years ago, but we had some administration changes and we revamped our entire tool set. We came back and repurchased and re-put in the Force Scout in 2015, and that's where we've really been able to develop our current use cases and the strength behind the Force Scout implementation that we have now. Right, and I'm just curious, before we close, are you, are you putting more IP connectivity on all of your kind of core SKUs? Are, are you seeing a potential benefit to put an IP address on a, on a, on a, on a wall, on a cube, on a desk, on, on all that stuff, and wh how do you kind of see that evolving? I, I honestly see IOT being, you know, it's evolving very quickly, obviously. We've got, we have, I, we have IP addresses on our window blinds. You know, so on that, your window blinds? Yeah, on our window blinds, so that they can control the amount of sunlight coming, and we're a LEED certified building, so we have all these different IOT devices to control sunlight, control climate control in the building. Now obviously our production facilities have a lot of IOT devices as well. And the Forest Scout helps us to be able to segment them into the correct VLANs, uh, apply virtual firewalls, apply uh, different changes within our network. 
it gives us a lot of visibility and gives us a lot of control because of the granularity that it just natively collects. Right, right. Well, Joe, it's such a cool story. You know, IP on shades. That's my uh, that's my lesson of the day. <laughs> that, All right. that it just shows that there's so many opportunities to leverage this new technology in a very special way, but the complexity grows it even does. faster, right? It certainly does. All right, well thanks for taking a few minutes and, uh, and really enjoyed it. Awesome. All right, he's Joe, I'm Jeff, you're watching theCUBE. We're in the Four Scout booth at RSA North America in Moscone Center. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.